We're at a point certainly in the market where we've got to help most of our clients today adapt to the same type of pace and speed that a lot of the digitally native companies have stepped up to right from the very start. And I think in so doing, I think the first thing that we need to look at is what's going on in their industry and what are the disruptions that they could be vulnerable to if they don't act very, very quickly. So I think we have a very much of a role having the type of industry insights that we have and seeing the emergence of technologies coming along just to expose those to clients and begin a dialogue around how can they impact, be impacted and how can they respond to that uh, in very, very quick fashion. The second thing is to try to get them on a journey to begin to become more innovative and actually respond to those disruptions in a very proactive way. And we don't see those innovations as one and done. We see this as a continuation of one innovation after another. So we really think our clients have to become proficient and develop as a core competency the application of innovation. And we think that's where there's a real distinction in our view of what's happening in the market and how we help clients to respond. And in so doing, they need to do that with speed, at scale, with a lot of safety and security built in and a high degree of certainty that as they begin a journey around innovation, they're gonna achieve the kind of impact and ROI that they're looking for. And then how do you sustain that over time? So we think if we can help clients to go through that journey and actually become more proficient in applying innovation, I think we will have accomplished a lot and will help our clients in a very, very significant way. So risk is a big, big factor in innovation. And I think today in the market, I think we, we find uh, the market itself, I don't think giving risk the kind of uh, visibility that it really needs to have. I think we are seeing a lot of reaction to innovation and in pursuing the innovation for the sake of improving the customer experience or a new business model or a new product, new service, new process approach, those types of things, which is all fine and good. But I think we all know because the technology now that's driving so much innovation itself comes with a lot of risk and a lot of exposure, that type of thing. So I think what we're doing, and I think it's somewhat unique in the market, is we're putting the security considerations and dimensions right in from the start. So I think we, we really try to focus on what are those implications of that technology, what new risk profiles is it creating for a client, how does an attack surface itself get expanded, and what's the risk tolerance of the client to adopt more risk in how they move forward with innovation. And again, I think if we can keep that in as a core focus of our innovation approach, again, I think clients will benefit greatly from that. Governance is a great topic, I think, in the innovation space today because it's a very fine line between governance in terms of restricting the kind of open innovation that most clients are looking for, but at the same time protecting the client and providing the kind of sustained model so innovation can really take root and become a true proficiency of an enterprise. So I think it's kind of a light touch model for governance. Enough in place to make sure things are structured, there's a set of swim lanes established, the risk tolerance of the enterprise is respected, but at the same time, allowing the enterprise to really be much more free-flowing, to be able to create innovative environments and cultures, to allow innovation to be sourced both from the bottom of the organization as well as outside the organization. And I think it's it's quite doable, in fact. I think if uh, if the processes and the governance isn't put in front, but is more takes a back seat to the innovation, I think that's the kind of balance uh, companies need and are, and are looking for today. So kind of process light, touch light, but really encouraging innovation to, to take root, encourage experimentation, encourage new idea generation. And I think it, it, it kind of finds its own balance along the way. Organization, I think, is becoming a, a major, major consideration in, in, the, in the introduction and the management of, of innovation in the enterprise today. I think it's very, very common that hierarchical organizations, much more command and control models, can have a real uh, stifling effect on innovation. And, and I think it's more than just the cultural dimensions and the allowance of innovation to kind of take root and prosper that the organization considerations affect. I think it's more around uh, being able to, 
to assemble teams and disassemble teams. It's allowed things to kind of self-organize along the way. It's allowing different areas of a company to come together that are typically subdivided by silos and that type of thing. So I think it's less a subject of, of true hierarchical considerations. It's more breaking down silos, allowing things to come from the bottom up in an organization. And really it's those considerations around the unorganization and some of the research and, and actual application that's going on in that space today that is more the consideration than just the, you know, the hierarchical considerations. But I do think that traditional organizational models uh, need to be broken down and more of these concepts around unorganization, I think are the real, I think enablers and facilitators of the kind of innovation environments that companies need today. So I think companies now have access to a number of new ideas and approaches to allow innovation to come from the outside inside. And, and I think you know, the first thing certainly is to recognize that they can't innovate on their own anymore. There's just too much knowledge, too much innovation occurring in the market that they need to open themselves up to that. So I think, first of all, just the concept of an open, e open ecosystem, to me, is step number one in, in doing that. I think the second thing, then, is creating an ecosystem itself in managing and orchestrating an ecosystem. And an ecosystem isn't just, you know, very, very well-known partners or research organizations. It's having access to the startup communities that exist all around the world. And how do you discover those? How do you curate them? How do you orchestrate them along the way? I think is a big, big consideration. And creating an environment where we don't look at third parties as suppliers and vendors, but we look at them as strategic partners along the way, I think is another cultural dynamic that, that has to occur. And then really promoting the concept of an open ecosystem in the organization to allow your employees and your different operating units to know that that's a good thing now. It's not a bad thing. It's not something that should be dominated by legal considerations and procurement and those types of things. They need to play a role, certainly. But it really needs to be led by, by the business and the technology organization to find those right ecosystem partners and to determine what's the best way forward with them. And then legal and procurement and the other uh, sub-processes with the organization to enable and facilitate that goal over time. Yeah, so there's a lot of experience I think that we all see, especially in places like Silicon Valley when it comes to innovation and kind of opening them up to, to startup communities and kind of how they influence the enterprise. And I think there's a lot to learn from the startups, certainly. I don't think you know, they have all the answers, uh, but, but I think some of them are just the, the speed and agility with which they operate, I think is, is certainly noteworthy. Uh, they have a tendency, and I think you know one has to be careful, but a lot of them will talk about ship then test. Now, I don't advocate that for large enterprises in terms of pursuing innovation, but I think there is a mindset shift there that's worthy to take note, which is things don't have to be perfect before we release them, that we can expose things to our customer base, certainly to our internal customers, and begin a process of iteration and refinement by learning as we go, as opposed to trying to perfect the answer before we ever expose it. And I think the startups teach us very, very well how to do that. I think concepts of the unorganization are prolific in the startup startup community as well, where, where you don't see the hierarchies, you don't see the command and control. They'll assemble and disassemble teams as needed based on the specific things that are, that are being worked on. And then I think there's just a culture where they put innovation at the forefront. And I think you know, it's not something that's relegated to an R&D group or the side. Innovation is just something that exists and is encouraged every day. So I think that cultural phenomenon is another big learning opportunity for the enterprise. Thank you